it says it's live. And apparently there's a ton of, t a ton of uh, comments already. Sonia is here. Sonia, use a beat buddy. Well, good enough. You don't need this lesson. <laughs> um, who do we have? Knuschbergkeks. <laughs> Guten Abend, Knuschbergkeks. So, um, apparently there are people here that um, favor this over soccer, football, which apparently is going on. I um, would like you on the live. Please tell me Glenn Fricker is there as well. Well, Glenn isn't here, but he, he should tune in because that's funny. Hey, Rob. Hey, Cheddar. Guten Abend. Uh, hey, Raphael. And everyone. Come on, Julian. I'm not going to read names now, but you know who you are. Love you all. Equally. Well, maybe Sonia just a bit more. Everyone. Equally. Anyway, um... I would like you, I know it's difficult, if in any way possible, to focus on the drum programming thing. No dogs, M Michiel, they are at the lake with Leslie and Eva. No dogs, shut up. Um, Le Mans and NASCAR, Sonia, no one's watching that. That's just people going around in circles. Anyway, let's, what I was going to say, let's focus on... Um, the drum programming and keep your guitar related questions for another live stream because otherwise we'll never get through this. Um, I'm recording this also in uh, 4K because you can see more detail when I re-upload it later, which is why I have a mic here. That's a Lewitt LCT 640TS. That is a Lewitt LCT 640TS. Um, and you're hearing me through this uh, NTG3 from Rode. So hypothetically, no Michelle, no Les... Stay here. You got shit to learn. So um, I'm my own switch bitch today. And let's get right into it. We have to cover a shit ton of things. We have to talk about the tools first and then how to arrange the tools and all that stuff. Um, which means this is what we're seeing. And if you're looking at this the whole freaking time, it's kind of lame. Because you're missing out on this. So I decided we're going to go and do this. And then you have both. You have all of this and you have this, uh, this. Okay. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> it was used by the famous YouTuber, the Gitagi. Well, I don't know if Studio One Four is better than any other DAW. We'll see. So I'm here. I can also be small. Um, no, wait, what? What's happening here? I want two. It should be on two. Ah, this is two. Small. And then I'm big. Woo, look at that. So, I'm in Cubase. And in Cubase, let's talk about this. Uh, this is not a GarageBand tutorial. Uh, what brand of video mixer? This is not drum related! Sonia! Um, this is a Blackmagic Design um, ATEM advanced panel. But this panel... Uh, this is only the control panel. The actual switcher is a rack mounted unit that gets in all the uh, video data on SDI cables. So I'm using the ATEM 1ME 4K and uh, the advanced panel. Everything's being recorded on a Blackmagic uh, HyperDeck Studio Mini, and you're seeing the stream. Uh, the Blackmagic web presenter is getting a feed of the same thing that's being recorded. So back to this, back to this. Moving on. Um, we're in Cubase, and there are two different kinds of VST tracks. So one that would show up up here is in instrument channel, which I have set up right here. And another, another one is a VST instrument in the rack. So if it's in the rack, I like saying rack, uh, you simply make a MIDI track, like this piano track, for example, and you assign it to that instrument pretty straightforward. An instrument channel is a little bit differently. It shows up up here. You have the same options, which they added later, to um, 
pick which ins and outs you have on all this. Uh, the difference is that I can open an instrument track and save it. So I could say new uh, new track. I'm sorry if this is all in German. I didn't change that. Instrument track. And now I can actually go to whatever, BFD3. Actually, you know, uh, here we go. I can actually pick my preset CLA drums. Uh, or whatever, or um, um, CLC, where's he? Uh, CLC, CLC drums, so there's different presets I have, and it will open with all the individual track presets already there. So if we have the mixer here, um, all these plugins that I have on the individual channels will all open with that track preset so you don't have to do shit so all these i mean look i, I was going to point at the screen that's a, that's not happening look at all these drum channels they will all open they will all be named um all i have to do which it doesn't do is uh these three groups that i have um i have to open those and assign the channels to them if i open this uh again so this is pretty much my basic setup and we're going we're going to go through it but um, that is the reason why I'm using a instrument track versus the same uh, VST instrument as a rack uh, uh, preset. And then you have to rebuild it every single time, all your mix and everything. It's just way too much work. So um, what we have here, this, th this instrument track is pretty much, the, you can't see the other... Well, you can. Here. See, hidden in this are the sub-channels. But on the first track of it, which is happen all, which is the master output, which also happens to be the overheads, um, this is where you would program. That's actually your MIDI track. So it's a MIDI and audio track at the same time. Um, what I'm using, and I'm going to show you a couple of different options, is BFD3. I have over like 500 gigs of VST expansion libraries. Look, these are uh, libraries I have. Oh no! Oh wait, wait there's there's way more. Uh, kit drums. So yeah, these are all the expansion libraries I bought over the years in about 15 years. Um, so to really get a lot of out of BFD, you do need to invest in a couple of great symbols and stuff like this. But that that's here. Um, program drums to make them cry. <laughs> Actually, he really liked the stuff I programmed for the track that we did together. And, um, wait, he is big. And, um, I think he was secretly kind of impressed. I heard a couple of comments that he made, like, hmm, that looks good. Maybe I should learn that. Something like this. But I never said that. He never said that. No one ever said that. So, um, Cheddar. Um, so the kit I have in here is something I put together. It's not a preset. If you go to, you know, presets, of course, you can load full kit presets. They never work for me. I want to have control, which is why I use BFD. And when I, when I have detailed drums. So there's three different mics for the kick, uh, which I don't really use. Uh, there's different mics for the snare. And you even in this room, as you can see, there's overheads, ambient mics, room mics. And for BFD3 kits, there's even pre-processed uh, comp mics and uh, the comp 2 and, and just an SM58 somewhere in the room. There's tons of options um, up to the point where you get option paralysis. So I have three toms. Some symbols, for some reason, from the very get-go, I always had right on one of the crashes, and then on the right spot I have a crash, which is always very confusing when you're opening uh, presets. So here's overhead as a stereo group, room, and ambient. And as you can see, if I go to the kick, I can assign how much overhead, room, and ambient. And that's very important. Um, I'm not... Cheddar and Michiel. I'm not reading your shit. It's confusing. 
it's distracting me from what I'm trying to achieve here. So, um, the overhead, the room, and the ambient are everything. If you turn these off, you have a shit sound. A lot of the real sound comes from those mics. And you have to balance them. And you pre-mix it in here. Uh, same thing for the snare. If you turn that off, well, then we still have my reverb. Let's turn that off. Um, Lulu, this is also small. No one ever said that. Shut up. <coughs> it's just smaller than usual. And no, no one ever said that. Um, so right here, if I turn that on the snare off. There. But you get the room back in. So there's a lot of detail on there. Same thing for the hi-hat. But snare and kick, you definitely want control over the room. A lot of other stuff really uh, de highly depends on the overhead, the room, and the ambience. Uh, let's, let's talk about symbols, for example. All these symbols have individual... Um, you can see stereo 5, stereo 5, stereo 5. So they have direct outs. Which we don't listen to. I'm 20 dBs tall. Is it, are you saying it's too loud? What are the, uh, tell me about the levels. Uh, B53 versus addictive drums, very clearly. Um, BFD, more detail. Uh, Sonia's name has a wrench symbol because she's a moderator. She can kick your ass if she wants to. Uh, the user interface of BFD3, that is correct, is not great. So, but if you know what you're looking for, to do a kind of a mix in here, I don't really use the faders. I use like the general trim volume. Uh, you also, depending on how big your kick is, want to go to this model page and dampen it more. Depending on the style, you know, if I do something more classic rocky, I might go and have more. Wait, did I turn them off? Okay, so uh, the important thing for setting up drums, of course, is the key map. And that's something that I set up a while ago. And of course, it shows you here in the beautiful key editor, and that is absolutely what I hate more than anything. Programming drums in a key editor really wouldn't work for me. It just doesn't. Uh, so... That is where the Cubase drum editor comes in, and I'll show you why that's cool, and another couple of things you can do with it. I cannot work without my drum editor in Cubase. Uh, this is big. Okay, so... Right now, I have this little drum symbol here, drum map. And it's set to my BFD2, new Tom, whatever setup. And I can go into the settings for that map. And here's stuff you can define, which in a normal key map, you can't. Now, imagine you're playing like an a, 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 um, electronic drum kit. You don't care about C sharp and all these things. You just want... The drum kit is sending out some note. Let's say it's sending out D1. Well, what if you wanted that note to go somewhere else, not on D1, because in your drum program, D1 is uh, already used. So what you can do, hello people on the internet, uh, what you can do is you can actually say, my input note is C1, my out note is a completely different one. So all I do is, I get the input notes from my drum kit, you know, hit everything once, I write them down, and then I just reassign them. So it's a rerouting for MIDI notes, which makes a lot of sense. Um, then what note is it showing? Because this can translate it directly into drum notation. What is going to be the head for that in the drum notation? Uh, what voice is it going to land on in the drum notation? So a lot of stuff you can do immediately here. Um, in the drum editor. And most certainly you can arrange 
uh, the names. So let me show you that. If I go in here, don't really have a system in what order I show you what. So in here, you can see on the left, I have kick. So of course, we can't hear now for reasons that I don't understand. Ah, because I changed the channel in here. Yeah. Here we go. Um, so all this information can also be adjusted right here in the drum editor. In my order, um, we have a kick and then nothing. I have space here, so I can always clearly see the kick uh, separated from the snare. I set the display to show... Um, let me do some things. I don't know, this is just a stupid part right here, but let's just assume it is a part that works. So the colors I set up to show velocity. You can only do from two, so I'm doing from blue to red, uh, which shows you the most difference, let's put it that way. Um, so you can see that I have my instruments clearly labeled on the left and it absolutely has nothing to do with any key editor where I would have you know C sharp and others and, and I would have to know what's on the keys which is very very annoying and I've got my splashes here I got my toms okay I got right and right bell I have a ton of different hi-hats the way we have it nowadays so that's um, a, um, an organized way of programming drums. You also don't see, where are we here? Um, you also don't see Hello. Okay. You also don't see lines. And then you just go. And then you have to go and, you know, change the velocity down here. That would be annoying as fuck. I, I, I've i never done drums like this. Because for 28 years now, I've been working with a version of Cubase at some point. In the beginning, it was called 24 on an Atari ST. Yeah, good old days. And then... Um, then... Later on, it became Cubase, and then Cubase, 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 up to like seven or eight, and then all of a sudden it was Cubase SX, and then it turned into who knows what again. Um, as I'm playing with my stick, Robin. Uh, so, okay, um, this is the layout. Now, a great uh, thing to do in this layout is this. Now, let's say you have an electronic drum kit and an acoustic drum kit. And you want that electronic effect or snare or whatever. So let me do this. I'm going to open battery four. He said and can't find it. There. I love battery. What I mean that hen zoom is weird. You know this? Woo! Woo! Uh, okay, um, no, I don't want a MIDI track, actually. No, I don't need one. So I'm going to open a kit. Argon kit, great. That's great. So let's see, that is a C1 right there. Beautiful. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to take some track I don't need. Here, Castagnettes, beautiful. I'm going to drag this all the way up. I'm going to call this E-Kick. 
Uh, I'm gonna do C1 out C1. I'm gonna assign it to battery. So I'm in the same editor. Here's my totally acoustic kit. Let's do something. Okay. And there's my electric kick. And there's my loop. Let's do one more. Let's go into my argon kit. Let's find a cool hi-hat. Nope. Well, that's kind of cool. That's an F3. So I want that in, in my acoustic thingy. So I'm gonna, again, pick something empty. Doesn't matter what that is. I'm gonna put that in the snare, in the hi-hats here. E click. I'll say F3. F3. I'm gonna assign that to battery. And here we go. So I'm gonna go and do a little hi-hat thing. Really tight one. Um and I'm gonna just throw those clicks in between. Um. Wait a second, uh, Shigrath. Shigrath. Why do you know that I have four keys to do different velocities? Because someone probably asked how I'm how, how am I doing the velocities, right? Mm, bop, bop, bop. Oh, Michelle, I love you. Um. So let's talk about this. We need dynamics. It's weird that it's moving, but I want I want to be big. We need dynamics. Dynamics are important. Uh, if you're doing the dynamics afterwards, it's a pain in the ass. Right, I did show it in the first songwriting last stream. You're good. You're watching shit. Um, so in Cubase, well, we'll, we'll talk about sounds. Mm, let's talk about this now. Okay, fine. You brought it up. In Cubase, I can go up here. It used to be four different velocities, um, but now it's five. And you can see that well, I set them up to 127, 180, 50, and 15. You can do in settings anything you want. You can even go to different presets. Now, the problem is you will have to always click on that and pick it. That's horrible so if we go into key commands and you go to MIDI yeah there's the four velocity settings one two three four and you can see I have them set to a s y x and D. Let me explain why. So, right here are the keys. And it used to be only four velocities. So, I had something I could do in the left corner here without moving my hand. I had my right hand on the mouse. And my left hand firmly on those four keys. When they added a fifth one, where was I gonna go? I can't do C because C is click on and off. So I really needed that. Um, I already sacrificed X, which is um, crossfade, and I'm doing shift X for crossfade now. So uh, what I'm doing, if you're looking at 
this thing up here. 127 is A, 100 is S, and it steps down through Y and X. And then the last one, the 15, is D. So when they added that later, I added D. Obviously, what? S, X, Y, A, S, D. Um, so A, S, Y, X, D. Uh, if you did that, you could, of course, do A, S, D, X, Y, whatever. I mean, that probably makes more sense. This way from high to low. I'm just used to this. Really, really used to it. So more stuff that I set up. I sacrificed Q, which is quantize, and quantize now shift Q, because I don't want to go up here to change my quantization. So if I go to quarter notes, you see the whole grid goes to quarter notes. If I go to eighth notes, whole grid goes to eighth notes, 16th, uh, triplets, 16th. This is stuff you have to switch to quite frequently when you're programming. Um, yes, I have a German keyboard, but obviously this applies to any kind of keyboard. So check this out. Q and W will change the quantization. So I can be in this area, don't even have to use my, uh, move my hand, um, and I can change the quantization. With E, I will always, no matter where I am, find back to 16th. See that? So if I'm completely lost, 16th is my, my basic setup. And with R, I'm turning triplets on and off. See this up here? Look up in this area. Triplets. E is 16th, and I go back and forth with Q and W. So, yeah, it doesn't matter whether he have a US keyboard or a German keyboard. Just put the key commands there. I mean, I, when I lived in the States, I had American keyboard and I obviously um, did the same thing. Um, yeah, so that is very, very important. I'm going to show you this when I'm programming. Um which, of course, makes sense for you to, to see this. Um, so I really can stay right there with my left hand. Another handy thing is uh, this. Here. My mouse has a wheel on it that you can push to the left and right. I make sure that I always get Logitech mice that have that, because look at this. I don't know if I have set it up. No, I don't. Uh, but usually I set up a key on it. No, mouse doesn't have enough keys. Damn it. Um, to also do start and stop. That way, I don't have to let go of the mouse. So you're not doing this on the mouse and keyboard and mouse and keyboard and mouse and keyboard and mouse and keyboard. So programming drums like this is very easy because I'm pretty much... here, have my thumb here to play, but I go back and I pretty much just put the plus and minus keys on the uh, on the jog wheel uh, to the left and right. And I can, of course, you know, move around with the with the wheel. Um, holding shift will move the screen around. But I can fast forward with the jog wheel. So, programming now, let's keep that big, he said. Is this even bright enough? We're gonna go with, it's bright enough. Um, let me just take a look at the stream here. Okay. So, I'm somewhere, I don't know, I'm going to hit E, now I'm back to 16th. So I go to my little drumstick, and I want to program a basic, basic roof. So, all the way blast, there you go. Is that the snare I want, or do I want, like, a rim shoddy? Yeah, I want full blast. Beautiful. I'm going to do two measures. I'm going to make sure they're looped. Loop de loop. Do I see that somewhere? Yeah, okay, good. Okay. 
So I, I saw, I'm sorry, I'm not saying what I'm doing. I'm, I'm intuitively doing this. Did you see that this is full blast, but this isn't? So I'm doing an X, ah, I don't like this. So I'll just go through the velocities to kind of get what I'm looking for. So only really the, the kicks down are full blast. So if I listen to this, Okay, that's that's a start. Um, now I would find out: Do I want you know the hi hat to be open? Do I is this a rocky part? Is this a grooving part? Let's make a groovy part. So I keep the hi hat more closed. Probably not. I don't like very jingly jangly big hi hats. I like it. I like it tight. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. So in between, I'm going to keep them relatively quiet. We open this. Um, maybe not even full blast here. Okay, that works. Now, what kind of drummer would it be if he just kept the two and four? It's all the little super details uh, things. And they really need to be super detailed and quiet. So we're really talking even less than 15. This is stupid. That's probably stupid too. I kind of want this here for some movement. Well, that's the thing. You don't drown them in the mix. They're really just to give it some some forward momentum. And you're not hearing them, you're feeling them. Um, oopsie. You could also actually do, and I'm going to hit R, all of a sudden I'm, I'm on triplets. Um, and have a little bit of a drag that I'm controlling. Let's talk about, and I'm hitting R again, oh, I'm back on 16th. Let's talk about some humanizing of this. Um, um, so, all the 16th, I kind of want everything that's on actual 16th. I'm hitting, you can see this option, I, and it's going to give me this quantization thing here. You can, of course, go to different things, but I want quantization. So, I'm going to make sure it's on 16th, and I'm going to go give it a little bit of swing, and you actually can see how the lines... You see how the lines are moving? The 16th lines? Okay, you can actually move the 16th lines back for swing and it's showing you. So I don't want too much. I'm also going to be a little bit randomizing. Like, not too much. Then I'm going to say auto apply. Bam. And make sure you check that off because otherwise every single time um, you're changing something on the quantization is going to do it. So I hide this again. And now I'm going to do this to the eighth notes, but on eighth. Okay, and auto-apply. That's horrible. And that's why you can go back. 
Um, ah, and auto is still on. See? Now they're just jittering, moving around like crazy. Let's do this. Add still. Nope. Sometimes. Ah, whoa, no, 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 no. See, it's auto apply is still on. Damn it. Here we go. Um, I'm doing bad things. Here we go. And so, uh, well, they have a they have a track. It's really that easy. If you if you are good with your left hand and you kind of have it down. Uh, you can really do a very dynamic track relatively quickly. Um, so let's talk about... I'll show you a couple tricks. No. Let's go into a pretty fat, uh, fat kick before I show you a couple tricks. Because this is the kit that I use for all, uh, this kit and, and BFD3 I use for a lot of the um, lively, realistic, super detailed stuff. Most VST instruments cannot be that detailed. Uh, I love uh, uh, Stephen Slate for the pow pow. I can get there with this drum kit, but well, not this drum kit, but the uh, BFD, but it's, uh, it's more work. Stephen Slate has a lot less detail, and you can't do at all uh, these detailed things with the uh, snare hi-hat, but it has the punch. So, we already added... Let's keep, leave the electronic stuff in there. I'm going to add Stephen Slate right here. You can't see that. Right here, I'm adding a rack of Stephen Slate. Nope, I don't want a mini track. So I, I got the Chris Lord Algae um, preset pack, and I just go to Rock One, and there you go. That's two different kick drums on top of each other. That one and that has a lot of room. That has more click. So it's layered. Snares are nice too, but I'm gonna close that and not worry about it anymore. Actually, that's wrong. I want... Let's, let's do this. Um, I'm going to go to the mixer. No, edit instrument. I'm going to use the kick. I'm going to assign it out of out 2, which of course isn't on. So down here, I have to say that I want another out and another out. So I've got three stereo outs all together. That's what I need. I need every, something for the whole kit and then something for the kicks. So that's out 2. For both kicks, remember to do both kicks. And let's do snares. Out three. Which, remember, that is only the direct snare, not the room and all the other stuff. So not the... Yeah, the overhead and all that stuff. That still goes going out of out one. So out one is everything. And I'm just taking the direct outputs to another on the mixer. Now I'll show you once I programmed something. So let's do that in here. So I'm picking and choosing the the good stuff from Stephen Slade. Hey, uh, Ricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and get another line here. I don't really care what it would be on the um, it would be B4 on the uh, keyboard. I, I don't give a flying rat's ass about that. Steven Slate kick. I'm going to call this C1 because that's probably what it is. C1. I'm going to go to Steven Slate. Let's see if that's correct. It is. And then I have no idea what the freaking snare is. I got to look it up instrument snare 
Where's the MIDI note? Here, snare head. Oh, rim shot. I want the rim shot. E1. I want the loudest thing. Um... So I'll take that and call this SSD Stephen Slade snare E1 E1. We go to Stephen Slade. Beautiful. That's how simple that is to get two kits together. <laughs> get it? It's sounds like a play date. Getting two kits together. Hmm. So, um, so I'm gonna do. It doesn't have any punch yet. But I have a loop that I can work with. And in here, you can see that they're playing. Both of them. So both kicks, both snares. Michio. I can kick your ass, just to let you know. Uh, so, let's go into doo -doo -doo, the mixer. Where I now should see... Uh, oh, that's battery. Let's call that battery. We're going to make this red. And here we have Steven Slate. We're gonna make that brown. Don't ask me why. So I call this Steven Slate main. Steven Slate kick. Steven Slate snare. So. Paint drying. You guys suck. You ask about this. You asked about this all the time. No complaining. Um, so that's the room. And I could just put a compressor on that or whatever. But what I'm interested in is, of course, the direct super mega punch signal. So, well, let's, let's take the room. What do we put on there? Let's put an LA2A on there. Uh, uh, silver. I have no idea why. Just because. I know why, because it sounds awesome. Um, so what I would do on the kick is, I mean, they're pre-processed, but I don't give a flying rat's ass. Um, so I'm going to put an 1176 on there. Stereo, because I made them stereo tracks and they're probably coming out in some kind of stereo. Um, revision E in this case. So that's just the direct signal. Boring! Um, I'm going to see the gain reduction is already qu quite there. Quite a bit of gain reduction. Uh, okay, let's get the level up. So we have the level up. The more release you give it, the longer it'll be. Let's see. Very short and punchy. Longer. With this kick, it's not that noticeable. Attack, obviously, a shorter attack will... Uh, a longer attack will mean that it's clickier. Good. And I will EQ it, even though it's already processed. Uh, I love how this chat has nothing to do with what I'm doing. 
yes, uh, Kuiper's Dream, uh, the symbols do suck. That's why I'm using the stuff that doesn't, which is the kick and the snare, for very uh, heavy things. Or sometimes I use the whole kit because I'm lazy. Um, so I want an API. And I want the API 560, which is this beautiful thing. The Waves makes them. You can get these as uh, uh, emulations from many companies. Obviously, Universal Audio makes the best one. There's no doubt about that. So what I want is a little bit less of the boxiness, which is around 250. Check this out. Now I'll give it low end. You don't need all the low end, really not. But around here. And now I'll give it click around maybe 4K. Obviously, if I'm doing really heavy stuff, that is as much as you want, even maybe more. So another trick is to use the fatso. I have that on my uh, kick and snare groups on the other kit as well. So the Fatso Junior is technically a an outboard warming thing for synthesizers. Uh, Hip-hop producers use it. It's supposed to warm and round synthesizer tracks and electronic beats and all that stuff. Uh, I don't really care what it's about. Um, I use it... You, Shimil, I'm calling you fat, so... I go to Harmonic Gen, which doesn't have any compression on it, but I do turn the compression on. And then we need a limiter. Uh, precision limiter, which is a very straightforward and simple limiter from Universal Audio. So we're back to zero. So for the snare, I would do a couple of things. I go to stud, which is not you, Michio. Um, and I'll go to the preset. They don't have a snare. They used to have a snare thing. Oh, fine then. Drum bus. So that adds nice harmonics. Also adds quite a bit of processing power. Um, so then I want... Compression, which the Chris Lord Algae compression is for snare, is a um, distressor, which now exists. If I type in distressor in um, from Universal Audio, but of course you need the Universal Audio plugin suite and all this. Here's the distressor, and you can go to Big Snare, and there you go. But a relatively inexpensive one that works natively is the supercharger from um, Native Instruments. There's a supercharger and the supercharger GT. And it works brilliantly to get exactly that same sound. Because I've tested them against each other. I've used the supercharger for quite a while before the distressor came out. And now I don't feel... Uh, that I need it anymore. So I go to the supercharger, I go to snare, and I'm done. That's ridiculous. And I don't do anything. Preset, done. So here you now have very, very, very punchy uh, kick and snare.
pretty damn awesome. So, oopsie, uh, if I'm here, how do I get rid of this? Uh, okay. So technically, now I have a kit. where I could add these. Now, does it fit with the snare? I have no idea. So now I have all the detail and all the beauty of all the uh, uh, symbols and all that stuff without actually um, sacrificing the punchiness that I can get rather quickly with the Stephen Slate drums by just using the kick and the snare from our friend Chris, Chris Lord LG. And of course, I could do, let's, let's go to something heavier. 